Greetings and welcome back to the channel. First off, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has liked and made positive comments, sent positive messages, and really helped to kick off this YouTube channel uh, with a bang and made it a positive ex experience for me so far. So thank you to everybody who has uh, watched and participated so far. And we're going to get into it. Today, we're continuing the building of this really cool old school high elf army, the square bases reminiscent of this old hammer stuff, which I just love. GW really just put it into these books. They really went all out. They don't really do stuff like this anymore. They don't have all these like hobby how-tos. Um, they really were DIY back in the day. Um, so that's why I like to kind of creep on eBay sometimes and pick up these cool old uh, nostalgic gems, which are pretty much cheaper than most mainstream GW products these days. So today we are going to get into it and we are printing up some proxy models of the Dragon Princes of Kalidor, the High Elf unit, the legendary elite cavalry of the High Elves, the Princes of Kalidor. Now, back to my mini factory. I've joined a tribe of an artist, which name I still cannot pronounce. If you watched the previous video where we painted the White Lions of Kreis, and I will leave the link below, but we are going to print these Dragon Prince proxies today. Very cool model, super detailed, really poseable, and got the little horse boy and the little knight boy there. Now I'm taking some green stuff and putting together part of the horses that had failed during my 3D printing process. Now. This is a really simple two-part epoxy mixed together. One part yellow, one part blue, turns into green, sets in about six hours. And I printed a few extra of the horse uh, models and clipped the an extra leg off those to replace the ones that failed. Problem solved. Now we are taking a little tacky glue and basing the horse models now that the epoxy has set and I've super glued the horses to some MDF bases and you'll notice I'm using these old school uh, square bases and I just have a little bit of sand and some cheap uh, gravel that I purchased at a fish aquarium surplus store they have uh, the best rocks, let me tell you. And uh, I just, uh, you know, I feel bad going to playgrounds and getting sand. I'll pay a few dollars for it. So we have the horse models and the knights primed black and Zenithal highlighted. So that, for those who uh, are new to this, that is a value scale drawing basically of your miniature. You're going to prime it black, dry brush gray on the bottom, dry brush white on the top. So I've created some dynamic highlights and shadows on the model. And now I'm just using some contrast paint, which is a transparent ink based paint. And I'm filling in the armor of the horse. I'm using Three different colors going with a really strong colorful scheme starting with this turquoise on the front armor piece letting that settle into the cracks using these really nice army painter speed paints which I pretty much use for all my miniatures these days um, you know I'm like a lot of you guys and I don't have a lot of time to dedicate towards hobbies as well as the channel so I have to choose my time wisely and uh, speed paints let me 
really take advantage of that. Now these horse models and their armor are just perfect for speed paints and contrast paints. When you have a lot of detail, a lot of these little cracks, crevices, little tiny little details, these paints really tend to shine. When you have more flat surfaces, they don't do as well. There's ways to work around that, but generally when I have models like this, I usually always go for the contrast paints. And now we're moving on to the blue portion of the armor. I'm gonna highlight those parts of the model really quickly here. Let that settle. And the speed paints are great. These tend to dry very fast. Um, when I paint, I like to have a little space heater on in the room regardless. Put the paints into the wet palette so the paints themselves don't dry out. But they're great. A lot of people don't like this uh, reactivation issue. Um, I like to actually work with it occasionally. Uh, if you want to get into some serious uh, glazing techniques, I think the speed paint works really well. And if that's an issue for you, I would just recommend some varnish. Works every time. Nice matte varnish on there. And uh, dry that off and then you can keep going. Um, and I painted these guys with some more layers, which you'll see upcoming in the video, probably like a day later. So do it as you will. But um, I highly recommend those speed paints. They're great. Go get them. So yeah, we're just going to continue painting over here. And I'm just choosing little spots in the armor here. And we're starting with these cool colors. And as I choose the locations for the, the cool colors, you know, I can kind of see where I want to place the warm colors next. And, you know, here we've completed the cool portion. And now we're going to move on to the red and the yellow speed paint. And while we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about the lore behind the Dragon Princess of Kalidor. Now, for those of you who are really into Warhammer, you'll agree with me on this. And one of the cool things about the High Elves is they are very, very flawed. They are very, very prideful. They are still the good guys, but they have a very inflated ego. They're very much a fallen race, a fallen civilization. They are, in the current uh, lore, they are behind the times. They are low in population and only a fraction of the power they used to have, they have now. Now the Dragon Princes are a the epitome of that being that there are these nobles from Kalidor and Kalidor is one of the ten kingdoms of Ulthuan and Ulthuan is the kingdom of the High Elves. Now the Dragon Princes used to ride dragons into battle when the High Elves were in the peak of their power. The land of Kalidor actually being the home of the dragons, and the elves who lived there eventually tamed them. Though in the current storyline, the dragons slumber, and the dragon princes no longer ride them, so they ride these horses into battle. But essentially they're still badasses. They still are not to be trifled with. And in the game, they're up there with the top tier cavalry. So a very cool unit. And I love what GW does. Say what you want, they do a lot of questionable things, but they do put stories into their toys. And that's why we like them. So. Next, I'm taking this 
brown speed paint and just hitting up the portions of the horse. I'm hitting the legs, I'm hitting the tails, and the small portions of the face that aren't protected by the armor. You made it this far in the video so far and you're enjoying the tutorial, comment below on what your favorite unit from the High Elves is. And what unit from the High Elves should we print and paint on this channel next? Because I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And I hope you're having some fun watching. So, moving onward with our horsey boys here. We're finishing up the contrast paint hitting the face. And after we've done the legs here, we're gonna hit up the base here. And I'm just using a little cheap brown craft paint here. Because eventually we're gonna put like the tufts, we're gonna do some dry brushing on here. So we don't need to use some of our expensive model paints on this. Just kind of creating a little earth texture here with the rocks and the sand that we glued onto the bases earlier. And we've come a long, a long way here. Uh, now I'm just taking out some Army Painter basic acrylic red and I'm going to hit up the spear shafts here and off camera I've done the capes for the knights here with a contrast red but I'm gonna hit up some of the other parts that we've painted with contrast paint here and I'm gonna use some thin watered down layers of this army painter red is one of my favorite reds. A lot of people hate, hate, hate on Army Painter, but I love their products. For what you pay and what you get, there is incredible value there. And this is also a company who listens to their consumers, listens to their customers. And most recently, a really good example is the Speed Paint line that's come out. And they've revamped it. They've included YouTubers and painters in the development of new colors. Really cool process. Um, love their stuff. They have a customer for life in me. So, taking on some of the highlights here. We're going to do some dry brushing over the contrast paint. We're going to make sure that we take most of the paint off of our brush. We don't want to ruin the contrast that we put in place here. And I'm just using some of these nice Vallejo paints now, the nice model paints. Before I used the electric blue, which I diluted with a little bit of white to make a sort of cayenne. And now I'm using this fluoroside oxide, I think it's called. Fluorescent oxide. Yes. Really good at pronouncing here really good at this. Now, hitting up the turquoise portions of the armor here. And I'm trying to hit the tops. I'm trying to recreate how it would actually look if the light hit it. We're trying to make these look... We want our toys you heard me, we want our toys to look as real as possible. All you grown men and women like me who paint and play with toys. But we love it, that's why we do it. All right, so I'm over here in my dried palette, old school. Um, and Van Gogh style. And we're going to create some of these off-white, off-yellows to highlight the yellow portion of the speed paint. And what this does is sort of creates a 
gold effect. This is a sort of poor man's non-metallic metal. And I'm not being as frivolous with this dry brushing here. I'm actually picking out some portions, mainly the edges. A couple spots. Picking out a few little portions of those edges to recreate where the light would hit. And there we have those boys. And they're looking pretty darn good, I'd say, so far. I'm really happy with how they're looking. And I can't wait to get them on the table. Now that most of the details and the colors have been filled in, we're going to start getting really specific with the details. There's these nice little leafy, patterny, organic things going on with the shield. This is really cool. It reminds me of the uh, Lord of the Rings elves. It reminds me of the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring where they have this, that big old battle in front of uh, Mount Doom. And the elves armor is just really cool. It's, it's not quite metal. It's not quite wood. It's this organic, but not sure what it is. It looks cool. And I love that about these models. Somewhere in between the Games Workshop style and the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings style. Love it. So continuing to pick out some little spots of interest. The points of the helmet that are jutting out away from the rest, just highlighting those, the knee caps where the light would be hitting. And then now I'm taking a little bit of a lighter brown and I'm going to put a little detail into the basing. And we're gonna do some sort of spot highlighting of the stone, do some spot highlighting for the outside portions of the horse also where the light would be sitting. Just a cheap acrylic craft paint, nothing fancy like we used on the miniature itself. Choose your battles, people. Choose your battles. We take now an even cheaper craft paint, this sort of khaki, I think it's called cornflower of this tan color and we're gonna dry brush over that once it's dried over the top of the stones just creating a little interest and dynamic to match what we have done with the armor and there they are and that's all we're gonna do with them and I think they look great and uh, they're gonna put some little tufty tufts on there some little grass grass make sure that the horses have enough grub and I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial and we're gonna roll that beautiful bean footage everyone enjoy